Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom. This is Ras Ayadonis, Tafar. This Ayadonis here. This is Yadin here, LOJ, the Line of Judah Society of His Majesty, right here, Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews after the Order of Melchizedek. Here from the roots, the commandment keepers, roots, yes, I, I and I, Rastafari, Rastafari Royal Order, Rastafari Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews. So, here we're going to address a subject matter right here that is a talking point, and, and there's some mm, <laughs> validity. There is some validity. So, you already know the title. We're going to work with this title right here Black People Deceived by the Bible or by our own ignorance. I was thinking about putting the title by their own ignorance. So their own ignorance, just looking at it more objectively and saying our own ignorance, looking at it more subjectively, you know? So does the Bible, is the is, is, is our disunity because of the Bible? There's a lot of them say, it's religion that keeps us divided, religion, right? Is it religion? Some say Abrahamic faiths, you know, because of what they've learned nowadays from the the, the society or the white, the so-called white society, from white society influences the black community. This is the case even from the very beginning of the enslavement, enslavement, Jabari, enslavement. But I like what you said right there in that presentation on Sarnetta. You know, you made an emphasis not of just being slaves. You know, like they said, we were slaves, but we were enslaved. That's a very, very important point right there. Just to put this on the record right there. We were enslaved, enslaved. Right? But when we refer to ourselves, for example, as slaves, that erases everything. That erases all of our ancient cultural, ethnic, human, even our humanity, right? So is it the Bible? This is what a lot of people say. It's the Bible that deceives us. So a book. So so we're saying, basically, once are saying that it's a book that deceives us. It's a book. So a book is deceiving us. A book has, 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 a book is on an equal level with us, Right, so it's the book. So even the book is over there in the corner. I don't read that book, but that book has been deceiving me. I've been living black all this time, but it's the book that deceives me. So when I get to recognize I'm maybe a Hebrew or I may be an Israelite, I may not be what the Slav masters called me. It's that book there that deceived me, but I never even checked for that book. But now, because I become more Israelite conscious, I begin to check for the book. So now my fellow brother is telling me, oh, that Bible is that Bible that deceives you. The white man, the white man gave you the Bible. <laughs> Did he really? Did the white man really? That's another, um, how can we say, it's, it's a myth. It's like a black myth, black mythology. These are some black, pro-black, we can also call them pro-black mythologies. That's the Bible that deceives us, the Bible that has us all divided. You know, some say, no, it's the Bible, the Torah, or the Quran. Well, first of all, when we talk about the Bible, right, from an Old and New Testament perspective, or when our people become more conscious of the Israelite and the Hebrew links and identification of we, the black people, right, and focus more squarely, right, on the groundation or the foundation to say, like, the Torah, five books of Moses, which by other groups like the Martin, you can say Jews, and in Judaism, they call those books the, the Torah. So you hear ones mentioning the Tanakh, right? The Tanakh, you hear a lot of brothers who are pro-Israel and, and, and Hebrew and Israelite saying, oh, the Tanakh, Tanakh, but while the Tanakh itself, see, here's, we're going to point out a little bit of the ignorance, right? They'll tell you that the Tanakh is an, is an acronym, an acronym. That means the T, the N, the K-H, right, is an acronym, right, Tanakh, right, one for Torah, T for Torah, the N for the Nabim, Nabim in the Afro-Semitic pointing, Nabim, if we go with the modern um, Hebrew, the modern, you know, Jewish pointing, right, or Eastern European, Let's, we have to qualify this, Eastern European, my right? Khazari and Ashkenazi or the Eastern European pointing, they'll say Nabim, Nabim, it all has to do with mother, the mother, you know, we are Yehudi, we are black Jews because our mother, right? But it's the mother tongue, right? So they'll say Naveen, Naveen, 
more properly Nabim. Nabi, 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 a prophet, Nabim, right? But Martin, they'll say Nabim. And then for the K or the KH is the Khatubim, 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 right? Khatubim. If you enunciate it like that, the Afro Shemitic enunciation can be the Ketubim. Ketubim from Katab. Katab means to, to write, the writings. So the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament was referred to amongst the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, right? As the Old Testament from a more Hebrew or Israelite or maybe a Jewish perspective is referred to as a Tanakh. So we, a lot of times brothers will say, yeah, I'm dealing with the Tanakh. It's the Tanakh. It's the Tanakh. Right? <laughs> Here's what's interesting. Tanakh, if you look up in the scripture, was the Canaanite town. Right? Tanakh was a certain Canaanite town. And there's a backstory to that. I point that out. Right? Just right here as a point. Like to go into this point a little bit more. Not at this very time. I'm just giving a kind of an overview. So for us as black people in this Western hemisphere for the past 400 plus years, we know the Bible. Well, well, well we know of, let's, by and large, from an objective perspective, we know of the Bible. There's a few of us, right, or there's some of us, right, that might know what's called the Bible because we have, you know, gotten past our own ignorance, right, and do an objective objective research. See, a lot of ones do the subjective thing. And so from a subjective perspective, we understand when one say that it's the Bible that that deceive black people. It's a book. Right? Giving power to a book. What is being avoided there? What's being avoided is the responsibility to the people who use this book or attempted, you know, they talk about attempted, attempted rape, attempted, oh, oh, oh the attempted R word, attempted um, murder, you know, attempted, you know, um, this attempted. It doesn't always mean that they were successful, all right? But if you look and speak to some black people, some black people are going to tell you that, well, they were successful, all right? Because the Bible has deceived black people. I see that's foolishness, that's folly right there. And that's a, a tell sign of our own ignorance. That's that's a primary tell of our own ignorance. That we're saying that it's a book that deceived us. And th that's the first myth we're going to put here on the table. The second pro-black, pseudo-black conscious myth after the Bible deceived black people like a book. What about the white man? What about the white man? What about the man who enslaved or enslaved us? We have the evidence, don't we have evidence for that? I mean, we can prove that, right? That it was, it was, it was white Anglo-Saxon Protestant so-called Christians that basically had enslaved, you know, black peoples that they call today African peoples. You know, Africa is another pseudonym. You know, we say we're African, African, African. While this is another terminology, right, that who has given us this? White people have given us this as well. You know, you know the whole thing about the maps. We look back on the maps and we say, wait, they keep changing the names before it was like Ethiopia. Nobody want to call themselves Ethiopian. Our ancestors did, right? About a hundred or so years ago in the Roaring Twenties when this movement, right, that has fragment, fragmented into a lot of different, you know, pieces. You know, when something fragments, it's like you have a glass. I have a plate, like this this plate right here, right? You know, a plate out of the porcelain. I drop it on the floor. It fragments into a whole bunch of pieces. This is what we have today when we're speaking about whether the Israelites, Hebrew Israelites, or, you know, black people in their different um, religious or spiritual, if you want to call it that. People keep arguing about religion and spirituality. And then bringing up this word religion, <laughs> How many times is religion found in the Bible? <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's ask these questions. How many times is religion found in the Bible and in what context? See, see, we're following along. It's, it's the, what they call the elephant. It's the ghosts. And we're saying because of white people, it's the ghosts in the room. It's the ghosts in the room. Right? It's the ghosts in the machine. Right? It's deus ex machina. You know what that means? Deus ex machinas. Right? Deus, God of the machine, of the matrix. It's the ghost in the machine that we're not addressing. We're saying that the book is what has deceived us. Yet his history, history proves, our own story proves, 
that when our own black people thinking with their own black mind, they use this book right, to free themselves. But then other Negroes today are telling us that, no, this book has deceived us. Right. And if you listen to them long enough, you recognize, you know, they need to, you know, go take that GED again. You know, go over that GED, get your basic tools up. You don't even have the tools right, to even free yourself with this book. And that's the problem. That's why I asked the question, is it the book, right, Black People Deceived by the Bible or by our own ignorance, by their own ignorance? And ignorance of what? You remember white supremacy? <laughs> I'm not saying that's a fact. That's a reality. It's a reality. Let's look at white supremacy for a moment. Is white supremacy real? Most people say, yes, it's real. Why is it real? Because some white people might push it. Other white people allow it to be pushed. And it's pushed on black people. And black people have become the victims of this. And white people talk about white, they're supreme because they're white. And so it becomes like a lie. It's actually a lie that we've been led to believe is true. Right? So what, what has deceived us? Right? Is it the Bible or is it the lie? Right. They even say, well, the Bible justifies slavery. You've heard that one, too. Right. They say the Bible justifies slavery. They use the Bible. Bible. Well, the Bible that they were reading, the Bibles that they were reading for the past 400 years, wasn't it like the King James Version? That's everybody taught. King James Version, King James Version. Wasn't the King James Version of the Bible? How many times do you find slavery in the Bible? Right. Or it's, show me in the Bible it says make a slave out of this person. Right. Show me in the Bible slave in the Bible. You can only show me even in the King James Version of the Bible. See, a lot of folks are going to show you these new Bibles. Let me say that on the record right here. They're going to show you. New, look, look, this is the Bible. This is the NIV. This is the ISV. This is the this and that and that and that blah, 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 blah. But no, we're talking about the KJV. We're talking about the Bible that was used over the past 400 years. Right. Over the past 400 years. What they're trying to do is change the goalposts. When they're talking about um, the enslavement of black people and the dehumanization and persecution and affliction and we could say the black holocaust, right? That was under the 1611 King James Version of the Bible. So don't try to switch the goalposts now by using some of these Bibles that came out. We can look at the copyrights. I, you can look at the copyrights of these new Bibles. We can see the copyrights of all these new Bibles, you know? And all that copyright is after 1865, right? All these new copyrights, the majority of them are after 1965. Mm. See what I'm talking about, the ignorance, right? Okay, we don't want to deal with the William Tyndall, right? You know, because some say, well, William Tyndall, Right, William Tyndall is is black. Right, some might say that William Tyndall is black. Right, should we should we touch on that? William Tyndall being black. Right, black people God used in the Bible. Now, even the whole this whole idea about black and white, this is also an invention of the same white Anglo-Saxon, the same crack of mind. This is another one of their inventions that they have invented. Right, you know and is it Ham, Shem, and Japheth? Is one black, is one white, and is one gray? You believe that? Does the Bible say that? Does the Bible say that one was black, one was white, and the other one was like, um, what, do, what? how do they like to say it? Tawny? Tawny? <laughs> Where did they get that from? You got that from the white man. Oh, it's the Bible that deceived. The Bible says that, that, that Ham was cursed. And, and we are from Ham, black people from Ham, and Ham was cursed. The Bible don't say nothing like that. The Bible absolutely says nothing like that. So, so look how the white man lied. The white man was using the Bible, right? Confusing and using the Bible, right? And basically, if we knew, imagine this right here. If black people knew, remember black people were told like not to read the Bible. See, they, they lied to us. They say, oh, when we came over here, they brought us over here, that he gave us the Bible. When? The question is, when did they give us the Bible? When? Right? And, and what happened before they so-called gave us the Bible? No. The question is, when did they give us the Bible and which Bible did they give us? Right? When did they give black people? I'm speaking strictly about black people here in these here Americas. 
because we're all black Americans now right here. So black people, so-called African people here in the Americas, North America, South America, and the Caribbean. Even heard Jabari say um, that they were like black people in Mexico. <laughs> Don't know if he picked up on, you know, what we're speaking about. Because, yeah, there were black people in Mexico. But going back to like the 1930s and like 20s, 30s, and 40s, right, black people also were in Mexico as well. And they were part of this movement too. What happened to them? You look, look around today. There's still black people in Mexico, but to the extent that there were then, it seems as though that's been watered down. That's been watered down today, right? So something has happened. So this is why we have to look at things in their proper time, right? In the proper time, in the proper context, because you can look up stuff in Bibles today and you can go to the interlinear Bible and look up in 50 different versions of the Bible. You can choose or pick and choose the version. But if we're to dismantle, to understand and to dismantle this uh, 400 plus year consequence or this 400 plus year curse, what do we do? What do we need to do, Khabarim? Right? We need to look, right? We need to look into what they were using, right? Because that is what we have a generational something on us. Right. We're ignorant. Right. Of the fact that a book can't deceive nobody. Right. Unless they are already deceived. Right. A book can't deceive a person unless they're already deceived. A person has basic logic, comprehension, understanding. But our people were robbed of that, were abused out of that. That's why we point to the Wooly Lynch. Wooly Lynch, let's make a slave. Right. Well, let's let's make us make a slave say, let's let's rob these people. Let's take from these people the knowledge of their own language and let's give them what is called um, controlled language. There's a section in the how to make a slave Willie Lynch papers where it speaks about controlled language. Right. This controlled language. Now, while I'm showing the ones on the screen right here. Right. Before we get into that right there. Yeah, I know that one says that we just collected a few of these right here. They say, oh, look, there's the white man right there. You know, there's a white man right there amongst his slaves. Why he had a black man. Right. Why he had a black man preach to them. Now, the date of this picture right here. Right. We need to get a date on this picture. But this picture right here, we have this is like 18 something. It seemed like 18 something. Right. That's like 18 something. Now, 18 something. Remember, if we're talking about 1600, 18 something is nearly like 200 years later. So 200 years later, after our people were brought over here, right, by force, by trick, by cunning, you know, all, all that, you know, by evil means, you know, by inhuman means, right, by brutality, right, by injustice, right, by spiritual wickedness, spiritual wickedness. Right. So so here's what we're touching on the spiritual wickedness. People like to blame the book because the book is easier than to blame the people. Right. It's like when people say that the gun killed somebody. Right. Right. If I say, oh, so and so was, 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 was shot and killed. What? Yeah. Shot and killed. And it's just me and that person that was shot and killed. And I'm I point to the gun. I say, yeah, it's that gun that did it. The gun did it. Are you going to then attack the gun and say, oh, look, you gun. Why you killed so and so? I said, yeah, that gun killed, but you're not going to have this. You're going to be ignorant. You don't know. See, ignorant means not knowing. So ignorance can be like willing ignorance, unwilling ignorance. Ignorance doesn't just mean somebody's stupid. Ignorance don't mean that you're stupid. It just means that you don't know. Now, a willing ignorance, you know what I mean? Yes, foul, say that, El Atan, oh, my soul, right? Um, willing ignorance, right? Now, willing ignorance that probably makes you stupid, right? That you, you know, you know that that willingly makes you a fool, right? You're a fool, and this is where a lot of our people are into this foolishness of blaming a book, right? Instead of first blaming, right, the person or persons or system or white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, right, who pushed this book, right, with spiritual wickedness, right? Uh, evil religion they had an evil religion was the evil religion christianity people like to say oh, it was christianity no the evil religion right was what those white anglo-saxon protestant see i don't want to just say it was white people right so to speak right but history proves right that they were on all of that 
racialism is ism schism they were on that racial ism schism here we have one of the oldest and first bibles that was given to black people here in these americas and caribbean this is the first one when black people attempted back in the so-called early days right to read the bible or to possess a copy of the bible and to read the bible they were murdered for it right they were killed they were murdered Right, they were murdered. Right, not just yeah, they were lynched. They may have been lynched. They may have been burned. They might have been been choked to death. They might have been stumped. They were killed. Usually, they would like to lynch, you know, beat them, right, beat them to death, lynch them. Sometimes drawn and quarter them. Are we going to speak about the reality? I know some folks are so subjective that this is hard for you. That's why we keep pointing out we need the objective perspective when looking at this. Look at this objectively. See, subjectively, right, I say the Bible, blacks deceived by the Bible, question mark, or by our own ignorance. I, I, I'm going to have to say by our own ignorances, things that we did not know, things that we did not know, right? Things that we did not know and things that were not told to us. Now, objectively speaking, right by their own ignorance well blacks deceived right by the bible or by their keeping an objective by their own ignorance by their own ignorance but being part of this people i get to recognize those deceptions or lies or or untruths right that even i believed or i thought might have been true right is based on my own lack of knowledge, right? Based on my own lack of knowledge, right? And if you're going to blame a book, think about my example about the gun. Think about the example about the gun for a moment. So me and somebody's in the room, right? And they get shot, right? They get shot and they get killed. It's just me and them in the room, right? And then I tell you, so-and-so is shot, has been shot and killed. And you're like, oh my God, you come over. And when you come over to the room, it's just me and them in the room, right? The person has been shot and killed. And I point to the gun. I said, it's that gun that shot and killed them. Like they say, it's that Bible that's been deceived. No, it's that gun that killed them. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? From uh, Are you going to believe that? Who's going to believe that? Who's going to believe if I tell you that it was the gun that killed this person and and you say well who was here well i was here and and the gun just just killed him <laughs> see i can't help laughing at it because you know what i'm saying it's true you know what i'm saying is true so why does not the same logic the same principle apply to the bible why are we letting the historical so-called white anglo-saxon protestant historical white man get off the hook for what he did right to our ancestors right why are we covering up you know it's like almost like some black folks that want to blame the bible it's almost like you want to be a sin eater for white supremacy you want to eat that sin or you want to transfer you want to move the goalposts. it was the book that deceived them so if somebody shoots you with a gun right it's not the person who shot you it is the gun that shot you technically speaking yes the gun but we all know that if that gun didn't have a person behind it the gun could do nothing right could do nothing the, the gun can't even take take the safety off you know the, the, the safety you know what i mean <laughs> the, so somebody had to take the safety off the gun pick up the gun aim the gun right then you find that the person was shot multiple times oh my gosh they were shot multiple times right notice right here the bible for the use of the negro slaves this is what's known as the slave bible here it says in the british west Indy, west india notice that india right west this is what 1807 so there was no Bible that was so-called allowed or legal to the majority of black people or so-called Negroes, right, in the Western Hemisphere, in the Americas, in the Caribbean, besides this particular slave Bible. 
right? And that base it down at the bottom, that, that, that will signify like the copyright. Printed by Law and Gilbert, right? St. John's Square, um, Clerkenwell, 18 in London. So this book was printed and published where? In London and sent to the British, you know, West Indies, right? And the same similar thing was done here in these here United States of Americas. The same thing, right? They use the same thing. They were part of the same cabal, right? The white people that were so-called uh, British, uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant that were in the Caribbean, right? Were part of the same guild, the same um, um, society, Freemasonic, whatever you want to call it. They were all a part of the same white Anglo-Saxon Protestant cabal, right? And they are the ones, right, that deceived black people, right? And not just deceive the black people back then, right? But this becomes a generational, right? You know when they talk about like generational curses, right? This is something that is generational. How do we say it's generational? Because you have Negroes or black people today saying it's the Bible that deceived, right? And if you look at the, the so-called slave Bible, right? Large parts of this Bible are redacted or cut out. And if we start to study, well, what did they cut out of the slave Bible? See, whatever they cut out of the so-called slave Bible, these should be the areas that we take particular time to study, right? And to put into context. And we study those areas that were taken out of the slave Bible, right? Even when so-called blacks and Negroes were given, right, a so-called Bible or allowed to preach it like over here, he is still focusing on those passages, right? The selected passages from the slave Bible. So even when they give the so-called blacks and Negroes, major not all, not all, not all, but the majority of them, the Bible, they only focus on those selected areas of the Bible, right? That were highlighted, right? Or published, right? Does it say selected? You see what it says? Selected parts of the Holy Bible, for use of the Negro slaves, right? So now think about what we know by and large of the black church and the verses that were often emphasized and overemphasized and song and dance made over these verses. And then think about the other areas of the Bible that many of us, when we become conscious, right? When we become knowledgeable and aware, we begin to focus on those other areas of the Bible, right? to balance off, right, the deception that they gave us by pointing to some selected areas of the Bible. This is why you hear a lot of black folks today even saying, well, you know, the Bible does have, you know, certain good things in it or certain useful things in there, you know, and then ones make all kind of jokes like, you know, if you were to throw some, you know, vegan food in the garbage, right? So the garbage, you want to eat the garbage, but the vegan food is, is good. You know, like you, you throw some good food in. The, so this is where the confusion, that's a part of that ignorance as well, right? So it's not the Bible, the book, right, that deceives anyone, right? The book. If somebody deceives, if I read some, let me give another example right here, right? Let me give another example right here, right? Another example right here. Okay. You ever been in a situation where there's a new appliance or a piece of furniture or something, you know, you know, a new, uh, you, you know, uh, p pieces of furniture, you know, like, like, like a part of furniture or you get something like a crib for a baby or some device and you have to assemble it. You know, those, those, um, those, um, what do you call it? Those, um, uh, manuals, like a manual for something, you know. I could use specific example, but I'm just generalizing right here. And you ever been in a situation where somebody reads through it and say, okay, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to put this together. And they go up ahead to fix it and to put it together, but it's not getting put together. They're running into some like a problem or whatnot. And then there's like another person there, you know what I mean? And the other person, while you're trying to fix this thing based on what you read and what you understood from the instructions, but you can't put it together, right? Or you can't put it completely. Maybe you could put a part of it, but you get stuck at a certain part. You don't know how something really works right there. And now somebody else reads it, right? And when somebody else reads it, 
right? And they see, well, how you must have understood the instruction, but they see, well, okay, if that didn't work, they now read it and they're able to understand. We all read in the same manual. We're all reading the same instruction, right? But sometimes using this in a non-biblical example here as a, as a parallel sort of reference, as a point of reference, to what we are saying, like as a point of reference. So when we look at the fact that sometimes I've tried to assemble things based on manuals and instructions and been able to do it. Other times I'm trying to assemble something and I'm like, I, I get stuck at a certain point. I mean, there's times that I thought I read the instruction, I'm trying to assemble it, I put it together, part of it's getting put together well that come to a certain area where something that doesn't, and I got to look over it again. And sometimes someone else looks at it and says, no, no, no. You see what it says right here? You're supposed to put that over here and that over there. You know, and now if I'm in some ignorance, you know, like, you know, we're not ignorant. No, 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 that, 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 that's not it. That's not what it's saying. And we keep doing the same thing. You ever see that happen sometimes? Somebody keep doing the same thing. And then finally, they begin to look at what the other person said. And the reason why they didn't look at it from the very get-go, I've been in that situation. I'm going to be honest. Are we going to be truthful here? Been in that very situation and someone else gets it. Right. Even though I might have been able to get it before, understand these instructions, that instruction, I might come across some area that another person might need to correct, explain, you know, or highlight something that I had missed. And this is what I think that a lot of our people miss. Now, is it the Bible? Does the uh, blacks deceived by the Bible or their own ignorance? It's like a two, two for here. I would say both. I would say the both. I would say that the Bible does deceive black people because of their ignorance, right, of how we got to this point and really confronting squarely, right, confronting what was done to us, right? Especially when you hear folks say that, well, they gave us the Bible when we came over here, when they brought us over here. Let's say not when we came over, when they brought our ancestors over here, they gave us the Bible and this deceived us. And this is our problem, the Bible. That's an oversimplistic, you know, that's an oversimplistic answer. And then the next part of this reasoning was going to touch on how we don't recognize the influence of the greater white society, just generally speaking. You know what I mean? We don't recognize the influence of the greater white society. What do we mean by that? That if we go back to the 60s, Right, historically speaking, let's go back to the 60s. Blacks started to move from the Negro ideology, even though the Ethiopian World Federation back in the 30s had identified us as blacks in the 30s and therefore as Ethiopian. That's a whole other, you know, subject matter, which is very important prophetically, right? Because we look in the Bible, we have various verses Psalm 87, verse 4, where it says, With Ethiopia, this man was born there. We have Amos 9 and 7, right? Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel, right? This is what a lot of the ain't right, the other Israelites, you know, don't get, right? So we don't recognize the greater influence of, 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 of white Anglo-Saxon Protestant latter day. Because today a lot of white people will probably tell you they ain't religious, Right? A lot of white people will tell you they ain't religious or they're not as religious, you know, as the previous generations of white people have. Right. Because they've also, in a sense, been waking up from the lies of their own ancestors, of their own white, you know, like them ancestors. They've been waking up. And then we have like the, the 60s and we have like the pro-black movement where there was more black consciousness on 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 um on multiple levels, right? You know, multiple level, like a full spectrum. That's what I wanted to say, full spectrum. There's a full spectrum of an awakening of consciousness among black people in the 60s and to a certain extent in the 70s. But the 70s is a tricky, it's a tricky decade. The 70s, it's almost like when we, when we got to like 75, everything for black people started to go into retrograde, 
right? Then we get the 80s and, and NWA, you know, and then the 90s, you know, you know, 80s into the 90s, you know, and then we come here into the 2000s, you know what I mean? With um, 9-11, you know, and then we come also into this digital um, technology, internet, you know, this internet age, so forth and so on. So we have to really recognize, you know, like 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 Marcus Messiah Garvey, we call him our Black John the Baptist. Even though he lost his head, Marcus Messiah Garvey he still was a Black John the Baptist. He played a role even in the scriptural, you know, narrative. There's a you know there's a role that he played. But he said a, a tree without its roots, right? Without its roots. So even our roots, as even this present generation and generation X Y Z, you know, I think we're in the X X generation, X Men generation today, right? Generation X Y Z have to recognize, okay, yeah, this is your time. You're living in this time, right? But you have to remember that you're not entering out of bone. You know, like 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 you're not, you know, that you have your history as a people. Right, like like you have your parents, your 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 father and mother, or in this fallen state, we often say the mother, right, and father, and usually sometimes by doing that, the father gets you know. But that's a whole thing that has to do with the greater picture of who we are, which is really connected with the truth, with the truth, right? When I say of the Bible, of what the Bible is, one of the only representations that we can easily use as a stepping stone. But anything that can be used as a stepping stone can also be a stumbling block. Fire can be used for a beneficial purpose or for a harmful purpose. Of the total number of verses, the slave Bible is missing approximately 90% of the Old Testament. Wow. See, this is why even today with a lot of blacks who will profess themselves to be Christian, not all, not all, but many of them, the Old Testament is not something that they really have have a good knowledge of. And most black folks and most folks I know as Christians, they don't have really a good knowledge of the Old Testament, right? Because they've been taught a certain way by white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, right? Christianity, that's the dominant Christianity for 400 years. Right for 400 plus years, right? And instead of confronting that, confronting what was done, the reality and the residual, the residual effects, the continual ongoing effects. Remember, the slave Bible is missing approximately 90% of the Old Testament and 50% of the New Testament. Of the 1,189 chapters. In the standard Protestant Bible, the slave Bible contains only 232, <laughs> 232, wow. Now, now, if you juggle those numbers around, 322, two. is it 322 two they talk about? 322 two, two, with skulls and bones and all that, right? Is that 322? Two, two? I think I'm correct, but y'all, you know, if I'm not, you know, slicha, but I think it's 322 two is the number that they use. You know what I mean? But just look at this, right? So when we're talking about the effect of the greater white society, the greater white society, especially coming into the 20th century, began gradually to fall off from the former white Anglo-Saxon Protestant white supremacy. You know, we are God and God's people and all that, la, 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 all that, all those lies, all those evil lies. You know, they began to fall off of the so-called Christian ethic, especially after World War II, when the majority of European so-called white Christian empires fell off, too, in World War II. Now, we will connect all of that, my, what it says in the Bible, weep not, behold, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, connect that with Haile Selassie the first, right? But that's a whole other point. See, people want to talk about, you know, Haile Selassie or Rastafari and so forth and so on. But the first thing you have to recognize the truths of what has happened to us. See, the real Rastafari movement, and we're going to have to address that as well, because there's a lot of, of Rastaism and schism going on out there. You know what I mean? The judgment first has to come to the house of God. So we have to check ourselves. That's why for this particular vlog, we're speaking to black people, right? Are blacks deceived by the Bible? Were blacks deceived by the Bible? Blacks deceived by the Bible? 
or by their and our own ignorance. It's by our own ignorance. It's by our own ignorance. I mean, I hear some of these ones and ones, not to even just call their names or whatever. They, they don't want to hear about that. They don't want to get into details. They want to get into a deeper study. So a lot of time we go for the shortcut, right? As black folks, the shortcut, right? The easy peasy. But it's known that the shortcut, right? The shortcut often leaves and makes deep scars. Have you noticed that? The shortcut often makes deep scars, right? The shortcut. All right, so the slave Bible is the first thing that we're going to put on the table right here, right? Why did they come up with a slave Bible, right? From the 18, was it 1808? We have this 1808. Now, maybe there's one before that, but I think from our research, this is one of the oldest um, versions of it, right? And before that, because they say parts of the slave Bible to be used uh, for the use of, for the use of selected for the use of Negro slaves, right? Now notice what they also did. In the King James Version of the Bible and even in the Slave Bible, it uses things, well, actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna look through it a little more. I know in the King James Version of the Bible, right? The King James Version of the Bible, when it uses servants, right? It even says of the children of Israel, right? That ye are Jehovah's servants. No longer will you be Pharaoh's servants, all right? Oh, yeah, and just for the record, you know, the Jews, you know, the Jews, um, the Jews were not sl slaves in Egypt. Let me just put that on the record. See, that's, that's a relic of modern, you know, whitewashed Judaism. You know, that's a relic of modern whitewashed Judaism to say that. So, so we see how people, they play fast and loose with the text. They, they give us a text and say this is the best translation from the ancient languages, right? And then they start to slip in words that doesn't even appear within the version of the translation that they give us. And then we believe that these words are really there. They went to, well, the Bible endorses and, 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 and it, it confirms and it, and it what, what is it, endorses, it, it promote, promotes and endorses slavery. And we look at the Bibles that they read back then, and we don't find the word slave in it. How does that work? No, no, how does that work? You see, they like to move the goalposts. They'll say the NIV, they'll use the NIV, the HSV. Not the HSV, they don't use the HSV. <laughs> That's the Hala Selassie version. You know, but they use the NIV, you know, the ISV, the ISV. They use all these other Bibles that have copyrights right after right after the 60s note know what i'm saying here the connection of these dots i'm not don't have time to go into all the detailed connections but i'm trying to highlight certain points that ones who are not on their own ignorance right will look into and find out if it's if it's right or exact like right here this is something that was published slavery withholds the bible uh oh did you read that Right, this is from the Morning Star, this old newspaper. We can get the dates, you can look up the dates and the times of this. But this is going back, you can see even by the version of this, this is going back like to the, to the 1800s at least. You know, to 1800s at least, right? Um, maybe the early 1900s, but more, more likely the 1800s. It says, slavery withholds the Bible. If anybody disputes this, read the following not from a fanatical abolition paper, but from a paper published in the very hotbed of slavery and a violent advocate of that accursed, that accursed system. So an accursed people said they are the blessed people of the Lord. See how they, they flip the whole script and you want to say the book to see. And even in their translation, right, they say servant. But somehow you think it says slave. So did the white man do magic? Did he do sorcery, witchcraft on the, on the black people's minds? That even though we're reading this and this says this, we'll read it like as though it said that. See, mind control, how to make a slave, Willie Lynch, there are real effects. They talk about Stockholm Syndrome, all of that. 
and we are affected by the changes that go on in white society. See, white society, uh, by and large, over the last dec, uh, over the last century or so, has progressively moved more and more away from the Bible. You know why? It's because of a lot of our black people and black teachers, men and women and even children, but you know, who have been teaching facts and truth of the Bible, the Bible being a black book, right? The Ham, Shem and Japheth, you know, um, rhetoric, the way the white man has made people believe is, is, a, is, a, is a straight out lie, is a cursed lie and everything. Um, let's read a little bit more of this right here. Right, just like a cursed system, right? That's the part we got up to. Can the institution be sanctioned by the Bible? Now, if you speak to some pseudo pro black, right, um, conscious folks, you know, and some other people out in the community who are more about getting hits and likes and, you know, getting a lot of people in the chat room and so forth and so on and going back and forth and popping their collar about how popular they are to do their own real research. Right. So they spew a lot of their own ignorance on a lot of these pro black, you know, pseudo consciousness platform. They spew their own ignorance and they're not doing the due diligence. You know, some of these guys, I've heard them ask the same question over and over, even though some people have answered them. Some of their crazy question, their ignorant question and giving them knowledge and they go back to ignorant. You know, when I talk about don't cast your pearls before swine or give that which is holy to dogs. Check check can the institution be sanctioned by the bible which requires that book to be suppressed lest it should be overthrown by it uh oh let's go over that again can the institution the institution of so-called slavery right the cursed system of slavery right of black enslavement let's call it black enslavement right be sanctioned by the bible which requires that book to be suppressed. So the cursed system, right, of white Anglo-Saxon Protestant slavery, right, or enslavement of black peoples. Right, we'll say of the Israelites, but we'll get into that on the next on the next level. We're just gonna focus on this. Does the Bible deceive black people? Does the book deceive black people? Did that gun shoot the man? That gun shoot 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 homie? I told you that the gunshot homie, you rush over to the house or to the room. You see me and homie in the room. Homie's been shot a couple of times. The, the, the gun is on the floor. I point to the gun and I say, the gun shot him. The gun shot him. That evil gun, that wicked gun. Get that gun out of here. The gun shot him. And, and you'd be like, the gun shot him? Can you imagine a person actually believing that and say, yeah, you're right. The gun is evil. The gun shot him. A bad gun. And they start beating the gun. You know, they say, I'm going to dismantle the gun. I'm going to burn the gun in the fire. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he's done to us by making us say, oh, the Bible deceived. Y'all are almost copping a plea for the white man. These ones are copping a plea for, it wasn't the white man. The white man is so nice. If it was for that Bible, that Bible made the white man an evil man. <laughs> really? <laughs> Even the white man know his own history, right? To a certain extent, right? Though we go back further, you know, so we should know better. Can the institution be sanctioned by the Bible, re which requires that book to be suppressed? So the so-called slavery, a cursed system of enslavement, it requires that the Bible be suppressed. Why? Lest, least it should be overthrown. Least the slave system should be overthrown by it. I must admit right here, the elders, you know, double honors, you know, to, you know, the elders, you know what I mean? You know, double honors to those elders, you know, that labored in word and doctrine among the Rastafari, I must admit, because they told I and I and taught I and I, the Bible's like fire. I remember this one. The Bible's like fire. There's a book that I had read this also in. I think it's from a UK book. Any of y'all Rastafari ones who are into books in the UK, if y'all can give us a list of some of the UK books published back in, I think, all from maybe the 80s, 90s, especially maybe, maybe the 70s too. There were some great books, some really good books. But one book said, the Bible's like fire, right? It can be used, right, to, to give heat, you know, and light, right? Or it can be used to burn and destroy. 
right? I'm just paraphrasing right there. But here, slavery withholds the Bible. I think that some, 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 some Negroes, some of them were so ignorant, they must have read this as slavery upholds the Bible. I was listening to one of the Israelite captains say that, you know, he was, he was going to like, um, you know, um, like embellish a story. <laughs> The way he said it was so fun. That's a whole other thing right there. Um, slicha, slicha. Some say salakia, but slicha, right? So let's go down here and let's read this here. This is from August 9th, 1841. You, you need to hear this. And, and I know a lot of folks, they'd be like, oh, the videos are like long and you're going into all this reading of this and you're pointing out that. And But this is how we learn. You see why I'm talking about the ignorance, right? You know, once it get something easy peasy, remember shortcut make deep scars. August 9th, 1841. Cheney B. Black was brought before Recorder Baldwin charged with tampering with slaves. Tampering with slaves, right? It was proved that he was seen conversing with a number of them in the street, that he asked them if they could read and write. Let's ask some of these Negroes today in the conscious community, can they really read and write? I mean, it's simple. People are, you better sauce up or sauce up or shut up. Okay. Well, sauce up. Can you read and write? Let's check. Can you read and write? And if they would like a Bible. So, right, this was the amount of evidence against him. That was the amount of evidence against someone who basically was conversing. This is 18, remember, this is 1841. Right? This is all in 1841. Right? In 1841. Right? Now, what version of the Bible do you think he was reading? You think he was reading the ISV, the International Standard Version? You know what I mean? Do you think he was reading the NIV, the New International Version? You know, the BBE? You think he was reading the Easy English Bible? What do you think he was reading that, 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 that crap they call the Easy English Bible? You know, that, that paraphrased Bible? Right. What Bible do you think they was reading? It was the King James Version of the Bible. I just want to point to that because that's the version that was used. So if we're going to dismantle what was done, right? Because we need to dismantle it in our hearts and minds. They took this, the chains off our hands and feet and put it on our hearts and minds. Our hearts subjective. Our minds objective. This is why we speak in this language. You hear a lot of others, but we're going to break down and build it and actually give you object lessons. So we got to find out whether some of these modern ones that be talk, 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 and this, that, whether they can really read and write, whether they can really comprehend what they're reading. Some might be able to read well, right? But don't comprehend well. Remember in school, there used to be reading comprehension. Why do you think even among black people outside of the Bible, outside of the whole Bible thing, we as black people, we be having our confusions, right? How often do we have these things kind of going on, right, going on amongst us? These back and forths going on amongst us. These conflicts, you know, going on amongst us. And sometimes it's based on confusion. He didn't say that. No, he, he did say that. That's what he meant. You know, and, and, and you're like, but he didn't say that, but that's what he meant. So he didn't say that. That's objectively speaking, but that's what he meant subjectively in his heart, his feelings and his emotions. So this was happening. And we're not saying that because of what was done to our people. There's not going to be any feelings and emotions, right? But we have to bring that in check. You know what I mean? We have to balance that we can't be uh, heart overhead. You know what I mean? You know, heels overhead, so, so to speak. That's going to be upside down, right? So this was the amount of evidence against him. In palliation of his conduct, it was shown that he was regularly, right, appointed um, as uh, regularly appointed um, as agent, I guess that's agents, a little typo there, agent of the Bible Society New Orleans, Narlin, New Orleans, right, to distribute the Bible to such as would accept it. The society, however, disclaimed having the distant intention of giving the scriptures to slaves. Look at that. So the so-called Bible Society back in the 1800s, it disclaimed having 
Note, note the language. The most distant intention. Yeah, I have an intention, but it's it's the distant intention. It's what I intend later on. I don't intend it now. <laughs> My, the most distant intention of giving the scripture to slaves and said that black had exceeded his commission notice that that black here is is because it's, it's a obviously a white man's name his 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 black is capital b right but they was even calling us blacks back then right that was that negro shit right all right right had exceeded his commission in offering it but as it appeared to be a misunderstanding <laughs> A what? Misunderstandings. Ah, leading to murderings. Yeah, for the simplest thing keep, keeps on happening. Yes, give thanks to Hitler G. Yeah, on that right. Did that misunderstand? I just had to say some of that misunderstanding there. But as it appeared to be a misunderstanding on his part. A what? A misunderstanding on his part and not intentional interference. Uh-oh. With the peculiar institutions notice what he calls slavery a peculiar institution it's like the bible calls the israelites a peculiar people the white man so-called historically historical white man here in these americas and caribbean he called slavery a peculiar institution that means like the israelites are according to scripture is is separate from all the peoples of the earth think about it Right to the Almighty, this slavery institution is peculiar to the white man in these here Americas and Caribbean. See, that's why when they try to go back and say, "Oh, uh, uh, the the Israelites were slaves," no, the Israelites were not slaves; they were bondmen, they were servants, even forced servants, but they were not slaves. Right? We're not going to even put that on the so-called Tawi, on the on the the Tawi, the 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 the, the Mitzrayim, as as one would say, the Kemetic people but the Tawi, the people of the two lands right yeah they had they had servants right they had servants they had bond servants they had captives yeah that, that that's how the world run that's that's the reality of it but we did not dehumanize say we in the black collective of the ancient past we did not dishumanize dehumanize another one because of their complexion or their hair texture or any of those sort of things White man has been searching for stuff, but he can't find us doing that. You know what I mean? He even tried to play ones, you know, because the Egyptians tended to be of a different black hue, right, than some of the Nubians, right? And he translates stuff like, oh, those filthy blacks. And you know, good and well, they didn't, they didn't, they had a whole different word for black, right? They call them Tanesi, the so-called Nubians. Right? But this peculiar institution is what we're zooming in on. Peculiar. As Israel is a peculiar people, this enslavement of so-called black peoples in the Americas and the Caribbean was a peculiar institution because this peculiar institution was enslaving the peculiar people known as the children of Israel, the Bait Yisrael, the Beta Israel here in these Americas and Caribbean. Right? See, that's the truth that black people, when they start to read and understand for themselves, that's what they found out. That's what they discovered. Right? You know, that's the truth right there. And many white people recognizing the truth of that, they said, I can't believe in this, this white people Christianity. So they went off to, to, to Buddha. They went off to Hare Krishna. They went off into other little things like a lot of white people are today, you know, to transcendental meditation, to yoga, whatever. I mean, still there's, of course, there's still those who are holding on to the institution of white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Christianity. Yeah, you know, and the various the demon de de denominations, you know what I'm saying? Right. But notice what it says right here, that they, they, they retracted. The Bible Society didn't want to get that. Some people, they say smoke. We'll say they didn't want to get that fire right from the white supremacists of that particular time. So they issue this 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 revision this backtrack right he just says appeared to be a misunderstanding on his part and not intentional interference with the peculiar institution he was discharged with a caution not to repeat the offense wow new orleans pecan um well pecanune 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 i think pecanune almost like i'm a pecanine 
Picani. I don't know if it's related right there, of August 16th. You know what I'm saying? But this is why this part here is important, that slavery withholds the Bible. So we have to ask, well, if they withheld the Bible, why did the bi black people eventually get the Bible? The Bible was eventually given to black people after we were re programmed. We had to be programmed. The enslavement was a whole part of a generational programming. Right? Most ones and ones fail to get into the real details of how what they did then and what are the residual effects today. So a lot of things are like that ghost in the machine that we keep doing or keeps happening, right? Because we never dismantle, we never like, like it's like virus, like you have a virus on your computer. You know what I mean? There's a virus on the computer. You know, there's a virus on there. So this virus that's on the computer, you know, or viruses. So you might have removed one or two, but you know how viruses themselves, even the digital viruses, they can kind of morph. You know what I mean? They can kind of morph into something else. Almost like disease and sickness. It can metast you know, metastasize into a worse form of it. And in a sense, that's what we're getting today in the conscious community. And this is not to say that ones have to be some religious, uh, Christian or whatever else, but I'm saying it's damn foolish, right? And it's also disempowering to say that it was a book instead of 400 plus years of white Anglo-Saxon Protestant ism schism. That's why when some of us look at some of the different extremes I don't want to say extremes, or people call them extremes among some of our groups today. I, I, and it's not that I'm endorsing, you know, many of the Hebrew Israelites or in everything they do, but in the basic premise, yes, you know, um, it's kind of early for us. Even if we say that these camps go back to the 70s or those go back to the 30s or this or that, it's still fairly young this process of seeking to undo, but we have to become more um, um, intentional, right, on dismantling, right? Because even if a black man reads the Bible and he comes across words and phrases and, and different verses that he's heard, he's going to begin to associate it with what he has heard out here in the world flesh and this satanic seclorum, this, this world system. You see what I'm saying? And this is where um, the, um, um, what's the word we're looking for? This is where the, 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 um, it, it's kind of like, um, it's, it's like, it's like good and bad. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like good and bad in a sense. It, it, the confusion, like a lot of the confusion can come in right here, right? Because it's impossible especially for we as black people, just off the rip, you know, just, you know, to look at the Bible, right? Or anybody really in this world that we're in today to look at the Bible, especially the King James Bible, right? Like, like somebody says, Jesus, right? What picture comes to mind? You know, what picture comes to mind when somebody says Jesus? You know, or somebody told the Israelites, people are going to automatically see, you know, this whitewash, this whitewash has become the status quo. Right has become the status quo. So it's not the the Bible that deceives. Right, it's the deceiver that deceives. Right, and the white man, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant historical white man, he was that deceiver. Right, many of our people also became, in a sense, unwilling, unwittingly, more or less deceivers. Right, because of the limitation of knowledge and information, and the suppression of the truth of the matter. Right. But over time, you know, over time we are, you know, growing, you know, just as a child or a baby or any of us, even as, as grown, we grow, we maybe get older, you know, hopefully get older and wiser. And hopefully in this consciousness, we will get older and wiser. But right here, there's some more I like to go into right here, but this is already a little bit over an hour. This was just like a first kind of address to this. There's some other points that we would like to kind of raise you know what I mean? But I think that's sufficient because we're leaving it at the point right here 
of the fact that they did not want to give us the Bible and we just showed you the evidence, right? Because the fact of the matter is that the Bible is black people history. Is it the history of all black people around the world? Check this, the term black, right? Came into use to identify a particular people and a particular people here in the Americas and the Caribbean. Most Africans have gotten into the black definition right nowadays because of their coming over to the West and, you know, seeking to participate in our victories. Why well, our victories, things that we have done even that has affected society where other black people. So we extend the black definition. It's us over here and our scholars and our people here in the Americas that first identified with the black because it became obvious when they talk about white supremacy, you know what I mean? That we're not Negro actually is a way of saying black within Latin, right? You know, coming from the whole Latin root and everything. So it's actually this whole identification of black comes out of the Americas and the Caribbean, and it comes out of the struggle of our people over in this region. And we identify our people over in this region you know, as the Bait Yisrael, as the remnant of the Beta Israel, you know, as the Israel, as the Hebrew and Israelite people. I want to leave you with this right here, right? From a Rastafari perspective, this is one of our Rastafari elders right here, a very important man, right? If it wasn't for this man, Marcus Garvey, that main word sound that he brought forward, he would have never, well, he brought that forward because this man was preaching that before he came to America. You know what I mean? Perhaps some people confuse Garvey's ideas with those of Reverend James Morris Webb, but they call him James Webb, who in 1924 pronounced the coming of a redeeming black king in a speech delivered in Liberty Hall. These are facts right here. These are, these are historical facts that can be corroborated. Right. So Rastafari is a Ethiopian, right, is an Ethiopian name. You know, it comes from the Ethiopian or the Afro-Semitic, Afro-Semitic, like Hebrew is Afro-Semitic languages. Right. Right. So this is what he this is what he proclaimed right here. You know, give thanks to Rastafari TV for this one right here. You know, this put together right here. We've been talking about it for uh, for more than a, a couple of decades actually, you know, ever since we found out about this, right? So Marcus Garvey, right, he comes after, you know, Reverend Webb, right? And he says this a similar thing, but a little bit different. And then in the Caribbean, right, those brothers in the Caribbean that would identify as Rastafari and later as like Rastas, they basically get it from Marcus Garvey, who got it from Reverend James Morris Webb. Right. And Reverend James Morris Webb, speaking about this brother right here, black American brother right here, speaking about the ethnology right, of the Bible. Right. And so our people were already into this research. Right. Jesus was a Negro by blood. Right. This is going all the way back, like to the 20s. Right. And it's from a earlier tradition when we started to be able to dismantle all this slave rhetoric, this enslavement rhetoric all the confusion, right, that white supremacy and how to make a slave had done. And we can then see clearly, we saw, boom, Negro characters in the Bible and that these people, right, were actually black people. This is his work right here, the black man, right, James Webb. Now notice, we're talking about the black man back in the 20s, right? The black man, the father of civilization proven by biblical history. This is why the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated from the 1930s, right? From the 1930s, right? Had in this preamble, we the black people of the world. And then the link from there was with Ethiopian, right? And then the link in the Bible was with Psalm 87 verse 4 with Ethiopia. This man was born there. And Amos 9 and 7, right? 
Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? We could go to Psalm 68, verse 31. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands unto God. And yes, ye Ethiopians also will be slain by my sword. That's there in the Bible too. I know some Israelites want to point to that, you know, but then if you move further, it says from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my, my suppliants, even the daughter of my dispersed shall bring mine offering. So this idea of us being black and identify, this is still at the time when we're being called Negro, right? Some of the black people that were more conscious, right, than the other black people were already preaching and teaching that the black man, right, the father of civilization proven by biblical history. That, so that means as a corollary, the black woman, also the mother of civilization and the black child <laughs> as well, right? But first we got a man up, right? This is his book as well too. So it's been in reprint. If you can get a copy of this, please get a copy of this. This is going back. This is the same one that, that announced, that prophesied Rastafari Hala Selassie, that king of kings on the throne of David. Right, which is another important aspect, right, of history and prophecy, you know, of history and prophecy, right? So right here, 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 Negro universal king coming to rule the world. He said this, and then about, what, six, six to seven years later, it came to pass, right? This is one of the original older covers of it right here. Black man, father of civilization, proven by biblical history. So this whole idea about understanding Egypt in the mix. So at the same time, we, we embrace Egypt as one of our ancient black civilization, but we also embrace the Israelites because don't black and black and black people sometimes, you know, we have our own disputes amongst ourselves. You know what I mean? We have our own disputes and we had them in ancient times. You know, that's what the whole Exodus is basically about right there, but does not dismiss the fact that, in fact, both are black, right? Facts, right? The evidence. So here, 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 brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, speaking of, you know, the unsung, right? And this is our brother right there. I think this is him. I think he passed in 1955, right? Some more on the black man, father of civilization. And these were the ones, let me show this right here. These were the ones who were doing the real research. You know what I mean? The, 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 the real research. So for us to say, well, the Bible is deceiving us today and then have our ancestors back then doing some crucial research, right? And not just on the Bible, like as a, like, 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 like as an Israelite only, but the Bible is speaking about the full picture, right, of our black history, right, of our black history. So this is the thing that we have to kind of recognize right here, brothers and sisters, the Bible people, you could say the black people, right? And we say the black people where we're coming from this region, right, reaching to Africa, because we, if we, we can't help out Africa, right, or black people in Africa, Right, until we can help ourselves over here. And many of our ancestors were doing just that. And this is one reason why even today we have a lot of the, the African and other peoples over here in the Americas, right? Because of things that we did, right, in our black struggle. Right? You know, fix it, black Jesus, they say. Well, you know what? How long did it take them to, to make us like this? Four hundred years? Even if it takes 40 years, right, we should recognize, you know, 40 years, you know, we should recognize that these things are not easy to do because we're speaking, you know, of the, of the hearts and minds of our people. We're speaking about the souls and the spirits of our people, those who are alive today, right, and in honor of those from yesterday, you know, <laughs> there are no white people in the Bible. Hmm. <laughs> right. Word. The white supremacists, right, use the Bible to justify their racism. The problem is, some say, right, there are no white people in the Bible. Hmm. Take all the time you need with that information right there, brothers and sisters. 
you know, take all the time. In a sense, there are no black or brown people in the Bible either. At the time the Bible was written, the concept of race as the racist has made us believe today hadn't been invented yet. So here's what we want to seal up right here, you know, and this is important for us to understand. If we're speaking about nations and nationalities for the real Israelites, and I say this as, as one of the royal order, the Rastafari order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, you know, <laughs> Yes, I, yes, I. There's more, more to come on this right here, but we just want to seal up with this right here. So no, the Bible doesn't deceive. You know, a book, a book, a, a book can only deceive a person if they've already been deceived before they even got hold of that book. You see, this is what we're saying right here. But if we look at it in in the most objective perspective to the question that we asked at the top of this video, why right? blacks deceived by the Bible or our or their and our own ignorance, ignorances deceive black people, why? Right? I would say that both does, but from the point of view of our ignorance, right? And it was just something that we ourselves and also we need to blame, you know, point the finger at the white man, not to let the historical white man and the racist get off the hook. Right? This is what I see happening a lot. Ones are letting, you know, the white man and the historical racist get off the book, uh, you, know, you, know, you know, get off the hook. You know, get off the hook by blaming the book. So you let the white man get off the hook, right, by blaming the book, right? Don't let the white man get off the hook by blaming the book. You know, Ross Iadonis, Yadin says so. You know what I mean? Don't let the white man, historical white man, if you need to put it like that, don't let him get off the hook by blaming the book. You know, we first have to recognize what the white man did to our people's hearts and minds and how this became a, a kind of a generational, kind of a psycho, psycho spiritual disease, right? Psycho spiritual disease. You know, and in that sense, you want to say his religion? Yeah, but it begins with what he put into our hearts and minds and all the lies and half-truths that we had been made to believe. And shockingly, some people still believe these half-truths to this day. But anyway, Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Yeshua Shalom, Shalom, Chabarim. This is Yadin, L-O-J. Check us out, L-O-J-S.org. Also, our podcast on... Rastafari Israelites, we're hoping to bring it more into prime time as we come into the new season upcoming. So stay tuned, stay tuned. LOJS.org. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom, Rastafari Yehudim.